And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you can start going back to your seats. This is the godfather of every festival that's ever been played on the planet Earth. Please, thank you, George Wynn. Stand by. Beautiful day. Mm -hmm. George, why Newport? Why did you bring the Jazz Festival to Newport? Well, Ed, I guess in 10 years you get to love a place. And uh, we came here 10 years ago in 1954, and we've just wanted to come back ever since. So uh, this is actually the beginning of the, uh, of the second, uh, the second 10 years. The second decade. Many people thought we'd never make it, but we're here now. Let's sit down and talk about this, shall we, George? Do you have a preference as far as the festivals are concerned, from a cultural point of view or from an entertaining point of view, George? You mean which between the jazz or the uh, folk festival? Oh. Well, I'll tell you, jazz is my life. The enjoyment of the folk festival for me is one of the great, great accomplishments in my life. I feel, but the jazz festival it will always be my love. That's my baby. Stop it, right? It's a beautiful line. That's my baby. George, after 10 years, what's the future of you and Newport Jazz Festival? Well, I think that if we handle it correctly and if we can work as closely with the city and the people in the town of Newport as possible, that it's possible that uh, uh, the Newport Jazz Festival can have a permanent life, that it's something that we can maintain on a high standard, on a high cultural level, It'll be a leader in its field and known all over the world. And I, when I say on a permanent basis, I look forward to coming back to Newport when I'm 65 or 70 years old and still say, well, I remember when it all started. George, basically as far as the legacy of the festivals, what are the characteristics of these festivals that you hope live on well after you're, you're gone. What are the characteristics that I hope live on? It's very difficult now because uh, when we started, we were totally original. We, we, there was no book to go by. We, in a sense, have written the book that other people have enlarged upon. The book is much bigger now. I hope we can maintain the influence we had at the beginning, which we are influencing the rest of the world right now, and still remain small. And it keeps us moving into increasing the whole concept of the music industry, because that's what we did. Well, hey, you realize that we have an impact, and what that music has an impact, and boy, it's great to be part of that. That's happening now. It's happening with the Folk Festival. It's happening with the Jazz Festival. So it's, it's exciting. I mean, well, these are exciting times, man, you know. You mentioned in an interview we did a few years back that watching Pete Seeger at Newport Folk made you cry. <laughs> are there any other moments in Newport past and in the last couple of years that have had a similarly profound effect on you? that made you really reflect on, on the beauty that you created? <laughs> That's a good, interesting question. Uh, as I get older, I try not to cry. Because old people, and when you're old, it's easy to cry thinking about the past and thinking about the great people you've had in your life as friends, as a wife, as family, as musicians, as experiences. And you can wallow in, in tears very easily. Uh, I don't do that very often. And uh, uh, it was a very idealistic feeling about listening to Pete, that this is the way the world could be. Have there been moments? Yes, the moments are there. So let's leave it at that. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'd really love to go on, but we have the second show coming up shortly. That's why we had to cut it, so please forgive us. And you're a wonderful audience. God bless you.
and see you next year at the Newport Jazz Festival.